All right. Uh, Assalamualaikum to all uh, students, uh, NBH One C and also NBH One D. Uh, today we are going to start our first lecture uh, online, uh, which is on introduction to management. So this is the outline that we are going to cover in this particular chapter. And I believe that uh, all of you have already looked into these notes. You have to. At this time around, I reckon the effort from you is much more important. You need to study first. You need to revise the chapter first. You need to look at the notes. You, you need to read the textbook uh, should you have one. And then you come uh, prepared for this online class. Trust me, you would have a much better understanding. So these are the things that we are going to discuss. Uh, definition, measuring, uh, managerial performance from the context of effectiveness and efficiency. And then kita akan tengok in terms of the functions and activities, levels and skills of managers as well as the roles. Uh, so the first thing, the basic management that has been uh, proposed by Mary Parker Follett is that management refers to the art of getting things done to people. Why we use the word art there? Because sometimes whatever approach that you use with person A is working, but not working with a person B. So you need to use a different approach. Sometimes the process, the formula that you implement that in company A is working well for you. But when you bring that formula, that processes, that teamwork into company B, it does not turn out to be okay. So it is an art, meaning that you need to keep on trying, you need to use different, you need to do different things and you need to be creative and in terms of getting things done to people because people is very subjective and people, people we are very complex. And in terms of the things that motivate us also keep on changing and different from one person to another person. So for some people, money is everything. The more money that you give, the more effort that he or she can contribute in but for some people you offer them money it doesn't really mean much because they have already a lot or sometimes for those even like don't have that much sometimes they prefer to spend the weekend with the family or doing the things that he or she likes <coughs> in a broader definition it is a process of establishing a mission for organization that is appropriate for the competitive environment, designing a strategy to achieve that mission, then administering and coordinating resources so that the mission will be accomplished in an effective and efficient way. It is quite long. And, but what we can do is that uh, here that we can identify there are several elements. The first element is formulation part, where you need to establish the mission and then you need to identify uh, to understand the competitive environment, which is the sort. And then kita nak kena design strategy to achieve that mission. And then you need to organize, administering. And then you need to coordinate uh, so that the, the controlling part, so that the mission will be ac accomplished in an effective and efficient way. That is where the leadership comes in. Because sometimes a good leader can ask the people, can inspire the employees to work even in the condition where there is not much resources. But we still manage to pull up. So that is the most important part of the leader. Uh, a simpler definition, and it is a process of uh, planning, organizing, leading and controlling organizational resources to achieve organizational goals. So what is the difference between effectiveness and efficiency? Because we are going to use this term a lot. Effective means that doing the right thing. I ask you to do an assignment uh, to be submitted on Monday and you submit the assignment on Monday, you are effective. And efficient is that doing things right, achieved by using fewest inputs to generate a given output. So in our context, if I were to ask you to submit your assignment on Monday and you are able to submit it on Saturday, two days earlier, you are being efficient. If I ask you to do one review of one article within the same time period, you can do two or three articles, you are efficient. So meaning that you can produce more by using the same uh, inputs, ataupun you can you, you can produce the same amount of quantity 
by using fewer inputs. That's the difference between effective and efficient. Organization is uh, a group of people uh, who works together towards common goal. And what do organization have in common? Yes, they have. Uh, they are made up of people, and those people uh, we've got things to do, and it must be coordinated. And and then management theory uh, critical for managers to be able to lead people through the fast path of change. So, like I said earlier on, leadership is very important because uh, at times like this. And we need inspired leaders so that we can still move forward. So these are the four functions of management. This must be on your fingertips. Kita pun akan discuss throughout the semester. And each of these uh, function, uh, top, uh, it has a specific topic on it. Planning, organizing, leading and controlling. So you need to remember all these four functions. Lah. So we go to the first one, planning. What does planning mean? Planning is setting goals and defining the actions necessary to achieve those goals. The situations must be uh, analyzed, understood, and the appropriate goals and actions must be determined in order to take uh, advantage of opportunities and or to solve problems. So meaning that this thing, you need to do this in advance. This is where the formulation part is the brain part, the thinking part where you need to decide what are the things that you want to achieve for your organization. Uh, and before we can do that, you need to understand the, uh, the operating environment, meaning that you need to do the sort, the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Once you understand your operating environment, then only you can strategize. You can come up with actions that we can do in order to overcome or uh, taking the advantage of our surrounding environment. Then once you know what you need to do, then you need to start to think of how can we organize. This is where the organizational structure comes in because you need to identify in terms of the tasks that needs to be done, who will do them, and how those tasks will be managed. So you need to uh, involve in the process of identifying what type of uh, jobs that we need to perform. Uh, so who are the people that can perform those jobs? And then how would those jobs or tasks will be managed? Uh, referring to the organizational structure. Ada yang organizational structure very simple based on function. Ada yang based on product. Ada yang based on a geographical location. Ada yang based on customer. So uh, that is the second part. The third part leading capacity to lead the members of work groups towards the accomplishment of organizational goals. Uh, you need to understand uh, that you need to understand the dynamics of the group behavior. Because uh, people will come from different backgrounds. Uh, the way that we are being uh, brought up or being raised by our parents also are totally different. So uh, doing uh, one thing with one person not necessarily means that you can do the same thing to other person and you might expect similar result. Uh, that is the dynamism of the people that we are working with. And then the ability to motivate employees. And kita nak kena faham. Uh, nak motivate orang pun uh, berbeza-beza caranya and be effective communicators because of why? because your employees need your guidance and your wisdom so if you can deliver your task, your instructions clearly and you become a good communicator they will understand better and controlling is the part where you monitor like a police lah and just to keep sure to make sure that everything is intact monitoring the performance of the organizations and the process of in implementing strategic and operational plans and the most important part dalam controlling is that we want to identify that deviation deviation means that uh, something that did not happen according to the plan and they deviate sikit and so we need to identify those deviation sometimes deviation is acceptable for example macam mana acceptable doctor uh, you expect to produce 100, but you manage to produce 95. So even though it is not uh, achieve, uh, it, it does not achieve your expected target, but uh, we only short of five units. So perhaps that deviation is acceptable. But if you expect to produce 100, but you ended up producing 80, so that 20 less is might not be that acceptable. 
So you might change the way that uh, you do your work and change the machineries, equipments and whatnot. Managers are the people who plan, organize, lead and control the activities of the organization uh, so that the goals can be achieved. So the next part kita akan cakap pasal uh, Minsburg managerial role. Saya rasa yang ini sangat berkait rapat dengan kita punya uh, assignment kan. So kita akan cakap sekejap kan. Manager ada pelbagai-bagai bentuk manager. There are different types of managers in our organization. Some are very strict, some are quite lenient, some are people person, some are operationalized uh, uh, type of person. <coughs> But as managers, these are some of the roles that they are going to play. The first one, uh, what we call as interpersonal roles. Kadang-kadang bila kita tengok pada manager kita, yes, they are performing this type of role. So, uh, the first one, uh, interpersonal roles, meaning that they manage, uh, uh, they, uh, they are responsible for managing relationships uh, with organizational members and other constituents, meaning that people outside of the organization as well. So sometimes they are going to perform ceremonial duty. That is what we call as a figurehead me role. Kalau ada function, business, uh, product of uh, product introduction uh, daripada company lain, for example, dia jemput kita, kita pergi. So that is part of figurehead me role. Uh, can we kawin staff? Kan? Kita pergi, for example. So that is part of figurehead me role. And a leader, meaning that you motivate, you work with subordinates, encourage them to pursue goals. And kita buat uh, morning meeting, kita nak bagi tahu outline in terms of what needs to be done. That is part of a leadership role. <coughs> and then license, uh, making connection with entities outside the organization. Nah. You meet up with suppliers, uh, with distributors, and uh, just to create uh, better connections and contact with them. And then informational roles. Uh, as a manager also, you have this power, information power. And you also need to perform these informational roles. Uh, it involves in terms of gathering, identifying, correcting, and disseminating, distributing information to the stakeholders of the organization. So there are three roles uh, under information. Yang, uh, the first one is monitor, meaning that you need to scan new environment for new information. So as a manager, you need to read, you need to serve, you need to seek information. And you need to be updated in terms of what is the competitors are doing. And then you need to disseminate. Kita, you need to distribute the information. You need to send out emails, reminder, uh, what's the updates and so on. And then you also become the spokesperson, sharing information with outside organization at times of crisis. So, siapa yang kita hantar should be the manager. Dia kena cakap dengan, uh, dengan public, uh, dengan uh, media, uh, representing the whole organization. And finally, decisional roles. And, uh, manager also needs to perform decisional roles. And yang pertama sekali, entrepreneur. Uh, like the definition uh, saying that you need to take on the uh, advantages and opportunities. So you need to seek for opportunities and uh, uh, improve your work unit. And then disturbance handler, as a manager, you deal a lot with organizational issues. And of course, you need to solve them And as a disturbance handler, especially when it comes to resources. Yang ni nak macam ni, yang ni nak macam ni, and we don't have a lot. So you need to uh, negotiate, uh, deal with all these constituents in terms of so that everybody's are happy. And, and then resource allocator decides who gets what, and, uh, allocating the fund as well as assigning the staff to respective departments. And, as walaupun sometimes they don't uh, feel that they belong in that particular department, but you can see the bigger picture. And last kali, negotiator initiating the change, you may be needed uh, to take part in and direct important negotiation with your team, department and or organization. Okay, uh, so I'll stop here and we'll continue with the next video to complete our chapter one.